the flop factor. I'm gonna say crispy again, I'm sorry. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today we have podcast episode number 18 where I share with you guys what I have been knitting for the past two weeks. Really excited to sit down and film today's episode with you guys. I have, as usual, a lot to share with you guys, but honestly it might be less to share than in past episodes. I feel like my project count is decreasing, which is good. My intent for the month of August is to clear my needles to cast off as many projects as possible. I am not casting on anything new, so therefore my project count is gradually decreasing. But I do have some things to share with you guys. First off being my finished Kutar top, which is what I'm wearing today. So this is a tank top pattern by Sari Nordlin, and just the basics, it's this halter style, like high neck tank top that has a lace pattern on the front and the same lace pattern is on the back. And once you get past the chest, it is just all stockinette until the bottom hem and it finishes off with a really nice folded hem, has I-cord edging all around like on the sides, the straps are I-cord and the neckline is applied I-cord as well. So I knit this with Santa Scarn Tin Line in the color Pearl Gray. Tin Line is a fingering weight cotton linen viscose blend and I really enjoyed the knitting process. I thought it was really a good yarn choice for the pattern, both in wearability terms and in terms of showing off the lace pattern. I think it did a really good job of giving really good stitch definition for the lace. I did knit this in a hybrid size between sizes two and sizes three. The recommended ease on this pattern is zero ease. And I my bust circumference fell in between sizes two and three. So I actually cast it on for size three. I did all of the lace paneling according to size three in the chart. But then when it came time to join at the underarm and you cast on some stitches, I actually ended up casting on a number of stitches that was in between the number specified for sizes two and sizes three to give myself as close as I possibly could to a zero ease fit. If I had truly done size three, it would have had a lot of positive ease. And if I had done size two, it would have had more negative ease maybe than what I would have liked. And I think that worked out pretty well because once you cast on at the underarm, you're in all stockinette at that point. So there's really not too much to keep track of with stitches. Overall, I thought this pattern was pretty enjoyable to knit. It's actually my first Sari Northland project and I definitely am going to do more in the future. I've always loved and admired her patterns from afar. This is the first time I actually cast one on. I find the lace details and all of her patterns to be really stunning and lately I've been really craving that sort of engaging knitting process where you have to follow charts or do special stitches and I just really like it. It makes the project a lot more fun compared to maybe like a plain stockinette knit, which you guys know I I love those as well, but it was nice to spice it up with some lace and for a tank top, there wasn't too many stitches on the needles and it wasn't too overwhelming and really enjoyed how the pattern was written, like the file format and the text format was easy to follow. I did speak in my last podcast how the construction of this tank top is a little bit fiddly. There's a lot going on because you knit the front and back panels flat and then you join at the underarm in the round, but because of all of the applied I-cord edges, you have to continue those at the underarms. There are a lot of like stitches that get put on hold, stitches that you have to kitchener with the cotton linen viscose yarn that I'm using. I had a lot of tensioning issues with very loose stitches that just would not tighten up. So I ended up having to do sort of like a duplicate stitch with some waste yarn in a few places at the underarm and like at the corner here where the straps connect just to make everything look a little bit neater. Not a problem with the pattern, that's just something that I experienced with the construction and fiber choice that I made for this project. So last episode I also discussed and showed up close the applied I-cord edge that you make with the provisional cast on stitches that you do at the very beginning of the pattern. So you start with the provisional cast on, you do the lace pattern, and then when you're ready, you take those provisional stitches, put them back on the needle, and you go right into an applied I cord. I had followed the provisional cast on that was suggested in the pattern, which is a provisional cast on from Knitty Magazine, and it creates very loose loops because 
you're basically just wrapping the yarn it's not really like securing it in any sort of way and it does recommend to wrap the yarn around a larger needle size which is what I did and the instructions for that provisional cast on also say that you'll end up with large loops but once you knit those for a couple rows in the opposite direction they sort of even out and you can't really tell but in this pattern because you go directly into the applied eye cord I don't really think there was enough opportunity of knitting to allow those loose provisional cast on stitches to even out so I ended up long story short I ended up with these really big stitches that you could clearly see along the base of the applied eye cord at the neckline and I was not too happy with that but I just accepted that it was something I was going to live with I don't really know what determines if I will want to redo something or if I will want to just live with it because I mean I talked a lot about frogging my Whitmore cardigan just because the sizing was off but I'm not willing to redo an applied eye cord I think that's just like how I am with my knitting you know some projects mean different things to me it's also just like a mood thing I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate so besides all that I just didn't really feel like being picky with this tank top so I was going to leave it but a viewer named Sarah had recommended an excellent idea in the comments so thank you so much Sarah for suggesting this and she clearly laid out how I can use like a tapestry needle or a knitting needle to manually sort of adjust the tension of each stitch kind of like pulling out the extra yarn kind of like where you are adjusting your kitchener toe of like a sock if you have knit a sock before and you kitchener the toe or any other knitting project where you might do the kitchener stitch sometimes you'll find that it's a little loose and you can actually go back with a knitting needle and sort of like pick the tensioning to adjust to fit your knitting and then at the end you just sort of like pull the tail out and then you weave that in so super great idea i did it it worked it was incredible it was like the best afternoon of my life i really can't thank that commenter enough for suggesting it so that's what i did so you probably can't see it now when it's on me but i'll show a clip of it i tried to capture on camera as best as i could the difference between the tightened stitches and the original loose stitches and i'm super happy with the result i did end up with a huge tail at the end that i just wove in and yeah that fixed all of the tensioning problems i had with the applied eye cord both at the front and the back so super happy with that besides that i don't really know if there was anything else major in this tank top that i needed to fix i did talk a lot about how i'm not really too excited about the armhole depth it is quite deep and it just barely fits where you can't see my bra underneath so that's good and I definitely accommodated for that by making the straps really short. My straps are only three inches long and I think the pattern suggests to make them like four to six inches long but if I had made them any longer than what they are now this would be dipping super low. So if I were to re-knit this I would totally not do like one to two inches of the stockinette panel after the lace before I join in the round. I should have joined in the round like there instead of there. So that's just for future me if I make something similar to this or this pattern again in the future. Maybe it's helpful to you as well. Just be sure to try on your knitting as you're making it. That was just something I didn't do and now I am paying the price. <laughs> but yeah, last time you saw this, I was really close to finishing it. So it doesn't look too different from when you last saw it. The finishing at the bottom is just a pearl ridge and then you do a folded hem and I did a whip stitch to attach that folded hem. So I just did a standard bind off. I, this is before blocking. I just cut a really long tail when I bound off and then I did a whip stitch every other stitch along the bind off edge to the specified length in the pattern to fold it up. It was a little tedious, you know, honestly it wasn't terrible. I feel like if you don't like weaving in ends or doing finishing things that might seem tedious to you, but I thought it was a pretty simple process and I was really pleased with the result. I totally could have done maybe every third stitch secure it with the whip stitch instead of every other stitch which would have made it go by even quicker but 
yeah, then I blocked it and it did widen up a little bit. The finish length from the underarm when I was knitting it is 10 inches for me, which is a little bit shorter than what's suggested in the pattern. And after I blocked it and I wore it for a day, it did widen a little bit and shorten a little bit to nine and a half inches from the underarm. That hits me right at about my hip. It's a great length where I think it looks good both untucked and tucked. So it's short enough where it is sitting right in my hip and it's long enough where if I want to tuck it into high-waisted pants, I can, and I think it looks pretty good. I did leave out the waist increases that are in the pattern, so this is just like a straight silhouette. If you follow the pattern, you will get a slight A-line shape, which I also think is a really cute style, but just for my personal preference, I decided to leave those out. Also with this tank, it has I-cord straps, and in my experience, I-cord straps always stretch out longer than I want them to, so I tried to mitigate that the best I could with this project. So what I actually did, so you do have to Kitchener the I-cords together in the middle, so I did have two long ends of yarn, and I ended up threading each end of yarn through the center of the I-cord on either side, and then I secured each end with a knot right at the base of the strap on either side. So basically I have the I-cord and it is surrounding basically a long, thin strand of yarn that's just on its own, it's not knit or anything, and tied. So it's kind of like a structural rebar for an I-cord strap because I'm thinking that now, because I have those pieces of yarn tied in there, the I-cord cannot stretch any longer than how much that thread of yarn can stretch. And we know that that thread of yarn is not really gonna have that much stretch because it's just one piece of yarn on its own. So I'm hoping that works out pretty well. We'll see. I mean, so far it's been good after one day of wear. I feel like I-cord straps, they'll probably stretch out a lot when you initially first wear the tank top for a whole day because all that weight will pull down on it, but then it'll sort of like, the stretching will plateau out. I do like the fit of this tank top. I measured it after blocking and it did have pretty close to zero inches of ease for my bust circumference. It actually has just a little bit of negative ease, but I can tell that this is stretching out a lot just by wearing it. And you can even see that I feel like it has a lot of potential to stretch out at these underarm points and might even be like too big, which I'm a little bit worried about. Again, I think that also ties into the fact that I made these panels too big, so it's just really big around my underarm in general. I do really like the flow of this fabric. It is perfect for a hot summer day. I wore it to work the other day with some dress pants and it was a pretty good outfit, I thought, for the office. My office dress code is not very formal. I would definitely say it's business casual, but honestly, a lot of people do wear casual clothes as well and it's fine. So for that sort of office setting, I thought that this was a professional enough outfit to wear, you know, just the tank top and then trousers and it looked pretty good. I like the high neckline of it. I like sort of the boat neck neckline that this created with the shorter straps. I think it's pretty flattering on me. Oh, I have gotten a lot of questions about what undergarments I wear with these sort of tank tops, especially after I posted my my camisole number five in the last podcast and talked a lot about that. So I do wear a strapless bra and I actually spent this whole summer like searching for the perfect strapless bra because I needed a new one and I find they're really hard to get anything that fits right and is comfortable and stays up throughout the day. So I ended up after trying on a bunch settling on a strapless bra from the brand called Lively, and I'll link it down in the description below. I just found that it fit me the best. It was the most comfortable, although it's still not comfortable. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like strapless bras are a necessary evil, and if you are looking for one, that's just one that I found works for me. Obviously with undergarments, it's always super specific to the person as to what will work well for you, but if you're curious, I'll throw that link down below. So that's what I'm wearing with this right now. I think that this fabric is super thin and the stitches are a little bit open. I would not feel comfortable going braless with this. Definitely need something with coverage, but I do know that there are some knits out there where I feel like you could get away without a bra like when I show my Audrey top in just a little bit. Now that one is very thick, so I think that this fabric, if you are planning on knitting with Tin Line, 
it is pretty thin. It's pretty thin, flowy, and stretches out really easily. All right, so that's everything about my Kutar top. Move on to my next finished object. I don't actually have it with me. I tried to take as many videos of it as I could that I can overlay. Hopefully I have enough footage to cover the length that I'm about to talk about it. And that is my Versailles scarf. It is a new pattern by Juliet Peco Designs. It is out, it should be out by the time that you are watching this video. And it's this beautiful lace patterned long skinny scarf meant to be worn as like a summer accessory and you can wear it in a bunch of different ways like a headband, a neck scarf, a hair scarf and I had a lot of fun styling it when I was taking photos of it and yeah it was a pretty quick stash busting project. I test knit it for Jules the designer and had a lot of fun with the test knit. I ended up using my leftover knitting for all of pure silk in dusty artichoke from my cumulus tee to knit this. I used about 23 grams of it to knit the long length of the scarf. It does come in two sizes, a long and I think either a medium or a short, but the long length ended up being about 40 inches long, which I thought was long enough to function as all of those accessories that I just described beforehand. So the pattern is knit on 3.75 millimeter needles. It is a lace pattern that is both charted and written out in the pattern. Super easy to follow. I think I knit it up in just a couple days. It's an interesting construction because I feel like with most long skinny knit items you cast on the short amount of stitches and then you just do a lot of rows to get that shape but this one you actually cast on the long way so you cast on a ton of stitches and then you just knit a short amount of rows to get the long rectangle and then you pick up the ends to do the triangles at the ends of the scarf so that was a fun construction to try I used the cable cast on to cast on the stitches I think if I were to redo the pattern I would make my cable cast on a little bit looser ended up just a little bit tight compared to my bind off edge and kind of restricted the stretch of the scarf in that direction but it wasn't terrible <laughs> it was okay and the reason I don't have the scarf with me today is because I decided to gift it to a friend I have a friend who is moving to Spain and that won't see her for a while so I thought it was a nice parting gift for her as she goes off on her next adventure in life so I'm hoping that she enjoys it. Versailles scarf pattern is out. I will link it below and definitely recommend if you want another quick project, quick accessory. It was really fun to get away from my garments and do this quick little engaging project. And then I do have one other finished object. Like I said before, I'm focusing on clearing the needles. So pretty finished object heavy. And I finished my Oslo hat. If you watched my unfinished projects video also called the abandoned whips video i mentioned this because i started this way earlier in the year i think around february or march i just wasn't really like interested in knitting it for some reason even though i've knit the oslo hat before and really enjoyed it i ended up switching from a 16 inch circular needle to a magic loop needle and that made the knitting process a lot more enjoyable oh i didn't talk about what pattern this is this is the oslo hat by petite knit and i knit this in san this garn pure gint in the color petroleum so i knit this in the size adult woman i knit it for myself and yeah if you're unfamiliar with the oslo hat it kind of has a triple folded brim looks like this when it's unfolded and looks like this when it's folded up i'll try it on for you guys i really like the color Knitting with Pierre Gint was an interesting experience. It is a thicker DK weight yarn. I say thicker, but I don't mean thicker. I think I mean denser. It's a pretty dense DK weight Norwegian wool. It's 100% Norwegian wool, not a merino, so it's not as soft as merino. It is definitely textured, would not call it rustic, but I would say it has rustic properties, especially if you're used to merino. I think the hand feel of this might take you by surprise if you have not felt pure gint before. Um, but this whole hat was knit on three and a half millimeter needles, and I feel like the pure gint is definitely like very dense on three and a half millimeter needles. I feel like if I went any smaller in needle size, it would be a really uncomfortable knitting experience. It's probably better knit on like a four millimeter or four and a half millimeter size, but the fabric it creates is super nice. 
I do like the style of the Oslo hat. I feel like it always takes me by surprise how much like extra poof there is on top, but now that I'm trying it on, it looks pretty good. It's also hard to visualize if I like this hat right now because it's so hot outside and it's the middle of summer, but I can picture this with like a cozy sweater and winter coat on that it'll look It'll look good. It'll be a good winter hat to have. Yeah, I'll show you the Pierre Gint up close. It is just like a solid color. I don't know if you can see that there's like a lot of texture coming off of it, like little fuzzies. And it's pretty stiff. Like, I feel like this hat is stiff. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab Nick's Oslo hat. So I've knit the Oslo hat before in a sock yarn. And let me show you the difference in like the, the drape, BRB. All right, so I pulled Nick's Oslo hat out of storage. He has worn it a ton, so you have to keep that in mind that this is like unworn. It is blocked, but it's unworn, and this has been like worn in pretty well. So I knit this in Phil Kalana Arweta Classic held double, so that's a sock yarn, so just picture any fingering weight nylon superwash merino sock yarn held double on the same needle size. And this is sort of the, the flop factor of the hat. <laughs> you can see it's very like drapey. It is pretty like flexible. And I would say the fabric is like thick to be warm, but it's not like super thick and bulky. And then compared to this Pierre Gint, and this is just pure gint held single because it's just a DK weight yarn. You can see like it doesn't flop as much. I hope I'm not lying to you guys, but <laughs> holding it in my hand, I feel like you can see that the pure gint is a lot more structured than the sock yarn held double. So that's just like an idea of the yarn comparison in the same pattern which I always think is cool. I definitely wanna get more into like the nitty gritty, no pun intended, of different yarns and their textures and how they feel knit up and comparing them with other similar yarns or yarns that maybe a pattern calls for. Like a pattern could suggest two different kinds of yarn. Well, what's the difference between the two? So I would love to get more into that in my channel. So you might see more of that content from me. Also, I'll just try on this quickly like it doesn't immediately stand up on top of my head as much. It kind of sags a little on the back. And this one doesn't really sag in the back unless I try to, oh, it's not even, doesn't want to. All right, well, there you go. This is my initial first impression of Pure Gint. I know Petite Knit just came out with a new Pure Gint line with all of her colors and the Storm sweater just came out and she knit that in Pure Gint. I really do wanna knit a sweater in it and really see how that compares to my Merino sweaters. I'm wondering if it would be like too itchy or too rustic or maybe it'll be like perfect. Maybe it'll be amazing. It's on my yarn to try for a sweater, but I have tried it in a hat. Now we'll get into my works in progress. I have two projects to share with you guys. The first is my Audrey top. It is a pattern by Petite Knit. It is another tank top and I'll show you what I have so far. It is hard to hold up. So it is basically done, as you can tell. Last time I showed you guys, I think I was still on the body. It is bottom up, so I was just in stocking it in the round. Wasn't too much to show. I also haven't really posted many progress photos of this on Instagram because it it's just really hard to photograph. The black is hard to photograph and it was curling so much that you could not even see the shape of it. So I, I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles with Quince & Co Sparrow, which is a 100% linen yarn. This is the yarn, it's held double, so it's a fingering weight yarn. And I'm using the color Eclipse, which is this nice black color. I was really curious about the linen knitting experience. I wanted a knit 100% linen piece in my wardrobe. So I was excited to cast this project on once Petite Knit released the pattern. It has a very similar shape to the Kutar top. You know, it's just the, I don't know how to describe it. It has like these trapezoidal panels at the front and the back. Petite Knits pattern calls for one to two inches of positive ease. That's about zero to five centimeters. So it's a little bit looser fitting than the Kutar top. And the back is a little bit different than the front. I'll just show you guys the front. 
and then the back you can see comes up just a little bit higher and I've done everything except for add the straps so knitting this piece was pretty simple it's definitely like basic beginner friendly because you just start with knitting in the round and then you divide the front and the back panels and then you just do decreases along the front and the back panels until you bind off. There's no edging to this. It's all raw stockinette edges, both at like the neckline and at the bottom hem, which I did not know when I purchased the pattern because Petite Knit Sample was knit in black. It was hard to see the stitches and I thought that it was applied I-cord edging, but I think what I noticed was the decreasing along the edges of the panels. This is not I-cord, this is just like decreases that are set in a little bit by a few stitches. So it kind of gives that illusion of an I-cord. I'll show you guys closer up. So yeah, that's the decrease line. This is the raw edge at the front. And yeah, that's the other edge. Camera does not like jet black yarn, but Hopefully you guys can see. I think it's pretty true to color when I hold it back here. Knitting this went by super quickly because it was on four millimeter needles. I thought knitting with the 100% linen held double was fine. I honestly didn't think it was that bad. I feel like I've had worse experiences with 100% cotton and I don't know if that's because that this is held double. I feel like maybe if you hold this 100% linen yarn held single with like a fingering weight, gauge pattern on maybe three millimeter needles. I could see that being a little bit painful on the hands and tough on the hands, but overall I sped through this, did not really need to put it down too often. It's fun because once you do the back and front panels, because they decrease, they go super quickly because every row is shorter than the last, which is pretty fun. So I did wet block this and I wanted to wet block it before I added the I-cord straps that will go you know, connect the front and the back because I couldn't really try it on. Like I was saying before, it was curling a ton to the point where it wasn't even, it didn't make sense to try it on while it was still curling so much. So I wet block this and linen really transforms when you put it in water and wash it. It also transforms as you wear it more and give it some movement and heat from your body. So I made sure to wet block this for a long time. Like I soaked it in water with wool wash for about 30, 35 minutes. And I also, when I put it in the water, I like really moved it around. I did like the opposite of what you would want to do with wool because you don't want wool to felt so you would never agitate it in the water. But with this, I was kind of like hand washing it in the bucket of water with the soap to try to get it as soft as possible. It still feels very like crispy. <laughs> I feel like crispy is the best word I can use to describe the linen. It's very stiff and you know, the fabric it makes is very, I'm gonna say crispy again, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it feels very nice and I can tell that it'll become more drapey and comfortable to wear with time. I don't think it's uncomfortable to wear because I did quickly try this on earlier without the straps just to see how it fits. And it did have a nice flow and I can see it, you know, it feels nice. Linen is really heavy. This is, I feel like a heavy tank top. I don't remember, let's see, I used under 650 gram skeins of the linen. So if I had used all six, it would have been 300 grams total in this tank top, but I am using less than that. So let's just say it's 275 grams. And this is the size small, just to give you guys perspective of the weight and like the sizing. So it is heavier, and I think most people know that or have experienced that with plant fibers like cotton and such, they are much heavier and denser than wool. So yeah, really quick, easy knit was really fun. I'm excited to see how this fits once I add the straps. I am gonna do I-cord straps as the pattern suggests and yeah, I'm probably gonna finish it this afternoon. I was thinking about finishing it before I started filming today so that I would have two finished tank tops to show you guys, but I didn't want the video to be too overwhelming. So I was like, mm, I'll finish it later. So yeah, this is my Audrey top. Very excited to add this to my wardrobe and check off another summer knit from my summer knits to complete. You know, we are, we're getting close to my goal of finishing all my summer knits by the end of August. And that's all for the Audrey top. 
All right, and my next and last work in progress is my Lanakai Summer Tea. This has been on hiatus for a few weeks. It's back on the needles. I actually used or am using the same knitting needles that I used for the Audrey top. So I needed to finish the Audrey top to get this back on the needles. I'm just using my wooden birchwood needles for this because this is kind of a slippery yarn. So Lanakai Summer Tea is an oversized circular yoke combination raglan shaping t-shirt by by Sally Yi. I am knitting it in Sorella Yarn Bamboo Sock in the color Pinot Noir. This is from their Spring Tonals collection and this yarn is 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo. I thought it was a good fiber choice for this big boxy t-shirt because I really want it to be flowy and have a lot of drape. This is fingering weight yarn. I think the pattern calls for a fingering weight linen. I'm not sure if it's 100% linen or some sort of linen blend, but you know those drapey summer fibers are going to get that nice fit that is in the sample photo of the pattern. So I did say just a few moments ago that this is a circular yoke pattern. So I have gone through all of the lace repeats. It has this really nice sort of geometric pattern of three lace bands that go across the whole sort of chest and shoulders of the t-shirt. But then once you finish the circular yoke shaping, you do actually go into some raglan shaping, which is where I'm at now in the pattern. I've just barely started it. So there's just a few raglan stitches if you can see where the stitch marker is right there. And yeah, I'll just do those until I'm ready to split for sleeves. And then the rest of this pattern is all stock and knit knitting. I do really like the twisted rib accents that are all over this t-shirt. I've been really into twisted rib lately, so that's been fun. It's also been really nice to get back into like this sort of construction after doing so many tank tops that have been either like knit flat at first or bottom up or adding I-cord straps. So this is very, it's like comforting. And I feel like it's a nice transition project to work on as I'm getting ready for fall projects. Even though I'm calling this like a summer knit, it is a t-shirt and it is mostly wool, so it's totally gonna be wearable in the early fall. So that's why I put this sort of at the bottom of my priority list to finish in terms of all my summer knits because I knew that the window to wear this would be much longer. I mean, I can even wear a t-shirt in the winter and just throw like a cardigan or a jacket over it, so. Really excited as to how this is turning out. Really excited to have this bright color on my needles because I did the gray Kutar top, did the black Audrey top. So getting back into my brights, which is always really exciting. And I really like how the hand dyed variegation is coming out in this tonal. It just looks so pretty. Really nice. This will definitely be my next focus knit, so I think it will go by pretty quickly if I only work on it. I do have some other projects to work on, including some commissions for some hats. Even though it's not fall yet, I have gotten in some early orders for hats, so that's exciting for me, but I have to knit those. I don't really talk about my hat business in my YouTube channel. I like to focus on my personal projects, but it is a good segue because that was the last of my whips and now we'll get into some acquisitions. So I needed some yarn for this custom order hat and I found some on a Ravelry D stash, which was convenient. And while I was ordering that yarn, the seller said, hey, I also have these skeins of spin cycle yarn. Would you be interested? And I was like, yes. I would because I have never knit with spin cycle before so let me grab it this is my first skein of spin cycle dyed in the wool this is a 100% American wool and spin cycle is known for their barber polling technique that creates these self striping but sort of marled yarns Andrea Maori uses them a lot in her designs, and this is in the color Overshadow, which you guys know is totally my color. I love these blues and purples, and I got two skeins of these, and my plan for this is to make a Harlow hat by Andrea Maori. It is a brioche hat. I've never done brioche before. I've been too scared of it, but I'm ready to take the plunge and give it a try. I think a while ago, somebody in my comment section suggested the Harlow hat as a good intro to brioche for someone who's never done it before. So this will probably be saved for that project, although that's probably gonna be a winter project, not anytime soon. I definitely have a ton of 
good colors in my yarn stash to pair with this. I was thinking, because the Harlow hat is two-toned brioche, so I was thinking that this Sorella skein of Tomorrowland from the Disney World collection, oh, it's upside down, of Tomorrowland from the Disney World collection would go really well with this. Enough contrast, but still pulls from the spin cycle color scheme. It would make a super cute brioche hat. So this is a nice, exciting, unexpected find from a D stash. So thank you to whoever I bought it from. I don't know if they're a viewer. I don't think they are, but <laughs> if you are, thank you, Katie. <laughs> and I also ordered that white Surrey lace that I wanted for my plans to make a Lento sweater with the Woolberry Caboose Collection yarn. I showed this last podcast. This is Rabbit Rump from Woolberry Fiber Co. And this is their fingering weight sock yarn. I got a sweater's quantity of this to make the Lento sweater, but I needed some sort of Surrey to pair with it. And I thought a plain white or undyed Surrey would go really well with this mostly white and black speckled yarn. So I ordered some from Amanda from Birch and Lily Fiber Co. She sells undyed skeins of Surrey lace fingering weight sock yarn and DK weight superwash wool. So I just ordered a sweater's quantity of this undyed Surrey. This is 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% silk, and 50 gram skein gives you 328 yards. So nice find, a little bit cheaper than if I was getting it hand dyed, even in sort of like a white color. I didn't really think that was necessary. So I just got the undyed and I think that it'll pair really well. And then Amanda was so kind to send me some extra goodies in the package, so I'll just show those to you guys now. She included this skein of birch sock in the color hyacinth, which I've been obtaining so many skeins of yarn, very similar to this color. It's very similar to the spin cycle. It's kind of similar to the Sorella yarn. I have some other skeins of yarn that are kind of the same color, so I might include this in a future giveaway because I don't need another of the same color sock yarn, but I have knit with birch sock before and it's a really nice squishy two-ply yarn. And then she also sent me some skeins of her dyed Surrey, the same base that I just shared with you guys before. This is the color Marvelous. It's this beautiful pink with lots of colorful speckles. And then this is in Euphoria, which is more of a purpley base with speckles. Really pretty, so I'm excited to add these to my yarn collection. Always exciting. Thank you so much, Amanda. You're really kind to include those. And we're approaching the end, but I wanted to share with you guys, I put up a yarn wall in my apartment. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I thought I would share with you guys what I did. So I've seen other people with yarn walls where they have skeins hanging, and I've always wanted that for myself. I found on Ikea, they have this whole pegboard system called Scottis or Skatis and it's just pegboards and they have all these different accessories including hooks so I ordered a white pegboard and my husband Nick put it up on the wall just this morning I just ordered one type of hook and they fit skeins on them really well so I'm super excited to use that as a way to display my single skeins of yarn I feel like my single skeins tend to get hidden in my yarn shelf pretty easily so I really like how I can put them now on the wall both as a display piece in our apartment but also as sort of an inspiration board so I can see what I have available to me so if I feel inspired I can look at the colors I can easily compare colors like it was really easy to hold up this new skein of spin cycle next to the other skeins I had hanging on the wall to see hmm like what would this match what would this go well with so I'm excited for that I'll link those IKEA products below if you want to replicate it I feel like it was pretty affordable and my husband said it was pretty easy to install as well. And then one last little announcement before I go, I am trying to de-stash some yarns. So I have my Etsy link in the description below where I have the de-stash listed. Because I already have an Etsy shop, it's just easiest for me to throw my de-stash stuff in there because it calculates shipping for me and stuff. So if you're interested mostly in Alifos Lopi, the Icelandic bulky wool, or Hue and Me from Lion Brand, which is a bulky weight acrylic wool blend. I have a lot of skeins from there still available, so feel free to check those out. I think 
it'll calculate shipping to any country, but it's probably going to be most cost effective if you're shipping to the US or maybe Canada, but Canada might also be expensive. So unfortunately, I can't control the shipping costs, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> but anyways, that brings us to the end of today's podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm so excited that we reached 10,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing. And if you've been following me along from the beginning, it just means the world to me. And I'm always surprised that people are interested in my projects, but I am planning on doing some sort of celebration giveaway for hitting 10K at some point. It might be a little bit delayed because of my upcoming schedule and such, but just keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.